It's a joy for us to have Brother Duke Jaira share the word this morning. He and his family have been faithful members of our church since 2006. Brother Duke is a full-time itinerant evangelist and uh, he's a writer. He has recently completed his doctorate from Center for Global Leadership Development, Bangalore, in March this year. He's been in the youth ministry for the past 22 years initially working with the Blessing Youth Missions and later as youth pastor of the Central Assembly of God Church in New Delhi. Currently he serves as the founder of the G4 Mission, which is an inter-church ministry to present-day people. He's a dynamic speaker, but I want you to know he's a gifted writer as well. He publishes a monthly youth magazine called The Days of Your Youth. He has written two books, No Beating Around the, About the Bush, Straight Talk, right here. And this is available at our welcome booth for 100 rupees. And uh, there is another book called The Good News for the Google Generation. So if you're a corporate person, you would love to give this to one of the corporate friends, please do so. Pick up one of the. This is 150 rupees. Both of this is available today at the welcome booth. And um, they are actually wanting to give the proceeds of the sale towards the building fund. And we want to say thank you for that. And, uh, you know... Brother Duke and his wife, they've been married since 2001 and they have two kids, Dale, 10 year old, and Natasha, 6 year old. They are good friends uh, for me and I have enjoyed the fellowship, the conversation, the encouragement that they give. And uh, I love the fact that he's passionate for the Lord, passionate for the lost, passionate for his word. And this morning, Dr. Duke Jairaj comes to share the word. Please give him a big welcome as he ministers the word today. Shall we close our eyes and ask God to speak to us? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful morning, the Sunday before our missions conference. We are thinking about missions. We are thinking about what the heart of God is thinking about, perishing souls. And even as I am flaming with a message about a man whose very name means the flame of the Lord, Lord, I pray that you will speak to each one of us. Fill my mouth with worthy stuff and nudge me when I've said enough. Amen. This is how soldiers go. I have not forgotten that phrase, though Pastor Walson mentioned it in 2008. A little after our founding pastors Mortal remains were placed here in this very place. When he passed away in that July of that, ma of that year, after we paid respects, after we testified about how God used this great man of God, a soldier for the Lord, you know, his body was carried to the Hyderabad airport. And Pastor Wilson and a few other church elders, you know, when his body was transported into the cargo cabin of the airplane, that's, that is what they said to each other. This is how soldiers go. We love soldiers. And Reverend Earl Stubbs was truly a soldier for Christ who served the cause of Christ in India. God used him and Sister Stubbs to start this great work of God. And aren't we grateful this morning? Soldiers, we love fiercely faithful soldiers, don't we? We love soldiers from other spheres of life. When India were tottering for at 31 for 2 in the World Cup final 2011 versus Sri Lanka at Mumbai, chasing 275 for a, to become the first team to win the World Cup at home, the dangerous Seva gone, the legendary Sachin Tendulkar gone, in the middle were two fighters. One, Virat Kohli, barely out of his 20s at that time. And the other one, other, other batsman, Gautam Gambhir. Together they put a fighting, soldier-like partnership. They raised up 83 runs in little over 15 hours. And India fought their way back into the match. Dhoni just took off from where Kohli left. 
Maybe we don't like some soldiers, like the soldiers of the ISIS, the ISIS. They come appear on YouTube videos and they kill journalists. We don't like soldiers like that. But today I'm going to talk to you about a soldier I dare say you will fall in love with. I dare say you will not forget in a hurry. His name, Uriah the Hittite. Uriah the Hittite. And before I talk to him, you know, I, I want to talk about this Gurkha knife sheath that I had. When I went to preach in Darjeeling in the year 2007, the organizers gifted me this Gurkha knife and I didn't bring the three knives that were inside this. But maybe the organizers wanted me to be a soldier for the Lord Jesus Christ. And today, I want to talk about a soldier who served his king, King David. A soldier who served Yahweh. A soldier who can help us understand how you and I can be soldiers for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when, when the Bible calls us to be soldiers, and I want you to, first of all, under, we must understand that from the word of God. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, chapter 2 and verse 3, Paul writes here to Timothy, Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. We must be soldiers for Christ. And a study of a real life soldier will give us an idea. Stories speak more powerfully than mere theories. Now I want to talk to you about Uriah the Hittite, as I already mentioned. His very name means the flame of the Lord. And today uh, I'm flaming with a message from his life done in an expository style. Uh, Pastor Stubbs used to do it so brilliantly. He is, the, he is postgraduate. I'm just a kinder class, kindergarten. You know, I'm an LKG, UKG. But I'm attempting to do an expository message on the life of Uriah the Hittite. And come along with me and we will learn together. And I'm going to talk about 10 stages in this life. And I'm going to begin with mighty Uriah. We read in 1 Chronicles chapter 11, 26 and 41 in the Holy Word of God. That Uriah the Hittite was part of the mighty men of Israel under David's leadership. He was in the list of the mighty men of David. Bible teacher Warren VSB, after a study of 1 Chronicles 12, said there are 340,800 soldiers that David had. And the mighty men of David was a small minority of this group. And Uriah was part of that list. He was mighty Uriah. He was not just an entry, but he was mighty. What about you? Are you just an entry some, in some list? Or are you mighty? Do you simply exist? Do you just get up and brush your teeth and, and eat your breakfast and then go about life? Uh, no, do you just exist or do you excel? Uriah was not just an ordinary soldier. He was an outstanding soldier. He was an outstanding soldier. How do we graduate from being ordinary to outstanding? We need God the Holy Spirit. I remember a time in my life as a schoolboy, I had to say only one line in the school drama. I went home and memorized that line for over six hours. And when the moment came when I had to act in this drama, these handsome men and these pretty girls all around, I got so nervous and I made a fool of myself, messed it up, I went home and knelt down and prayed, Oh Lord, I will never get on stage for you ever again in my life. I will do anything else but never get on stage for you. But thank God for unanswered prayers. <laughs> God filled me with the Holy Spirit. And I went back to this very stage where I mumbled and fumbled and became nervous and, and my knees were knocking. I preached the gospel to my school. Of over 500 people were there that day. 20 minutes at that time, I didn't even have a notes. And you know, I didn't have notes. I preached on hell. There was a girl there who fainted after the service. It was an unusual baptism into the, into the ministry of preaching for a 16 year old. And how did I become from puny mouse duke to powerhouse duke? Still a long way to go. Because of the Holy Spirit. You can graduate from ordinary to extraordinary. 
if you invite the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life, mighty Uriah, merging Uriah. The Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 23 and verse 39, Uriah, the Hittite, was part of the team of 37. Bible scholars, after studying the relevant passages, say that there are two teams of two, uh, two teams of two, okay, two sets, so two sets, sorry, two sets of three and one set of 30. And then the commander in chief was Joab. So it totals up to 37. After studying 1 Chronicles 11 and 2 Chronicles, 2 Samuel 23. Two sets of three, one set of 30, and a total of 37. Uriah was part of that. And in that team, Uriah had to work with a lot of ites, including his father-in-law, his wife's Bathsheba's father, Eliam. If you study relevant scriptures, I don't have the time to go into that. Eliam was also one of the mighty men. You know, remember in DDLJ, India's most watched movie, okay, Shah Rukh Khan trying to impress his, you know, future father-in-law. You know, here was this man working in a team which had father-in-law in it, but he was working with his father-in-law. He was working with Eliab, the Shabo knight, and so many different ites. In fact, you can count a number of, at least 10 different ites, 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 palite, paltite, and and Aho height and all that but he worked along with them I don't think the going was smooth I don't think the ride was smooth I think uh, there, are, there were people who rubbed him the wrong way but he stayed put in that team and he merged along for the larger goal today you're part of a team you're part of a family let's talk about that I'm part of a family too okay if I gave myself a nickname my nickname would be mess man if I give my wife a nickname, it will be Clean Queen. How would it be if Mess Man and Clean Queen live together? But praise God, for the last 13 years, we've had a smashing marriage. You know, because we have made our marriage work despite our differences. You're part of a local church. In this local church, we have an Andrite and we have a Keralite. We have different heights. You know, we have, we have, we have, we have... We have uh, the, the Punjabi, the Bengali, the Sindhi, the Rajasthani, and the Nepalis. We have the Lees. We have the Yees. We have the Chinese and the Goanese. We have the Orian and the and the Tamilian. But we all are one. Okay, it's a little bit like Real Madrid. You know, Real Madrid team put up the most costliest professional sport team in world history. 523 million pounds in transfer fees is what it took the owner okay in that team was the german Cruz, the french benzema spanish casillas colombia's rodriguez and garrett ballet of united kingdom croatia's modric all of these guys from different nations playing for one club it cost 523 million pounds there's something more costly than 523 million pounds put us all together and that is the priceless precious infinitely valuable blood of Jesus shed for us on the cross of Calvary and that is why no matter what our background is we're all part of one family and today we have a goal a God-given goal a goal that was birthed in prayer and that goal is to build a church in our God-given property and we need to work together we need to merge and work together marching Uriah, thirdly, the Bible says in 2 Samuel 11, 1, 2, and 6, that in the time when it was time for the kings to go to battle, David stayed back in Jerusalem. David chose Bathsheba, but his team, you read that passage, but his army went to went to the Ammonite capital, Rabbah. David chose Bathsheba instead of Rabbah. But our man Uriah said bye-bye to Bathsheba and went to Rabbah, the war camp. He was marching. He was marching towards the war. 
war front and he was in the war front when david called him back he was in the battle when david called him back god has called you to be a soldier god has called you to be a warrior god has called you to fight god has called you to fight against the world the bible says you adulteresses don't you know that friendship with the world is hostility towards god so who wants to be in the wants to be the world's friend becomes god's enemy in james 4:4 the world is our enemy now the flesh our sinful desire is our enemy the bible says in second peter chapter 2 verse 11 dear friends i urge you as strangers and as temporary residents of this world to abstain from fleshly desires that war against your soul we have a war against the flesh we have the war against the devil we know he's the roaring lion and we also have a war against false teachers the bible says in revelation chapter 2 verse 20 these are the words of jesus i have this against you church believers he's speaking to church believers he who would tolerate that woman jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and teaches and deceives my slaves to commit sexual immorality and to eat meat sacrificed to idols appreciate our church's stance taken against popular money making doctrines like prosperity doctrine i appreciate it i i salute our church leadership for taking a stance against it because we as a body of believers must love the false teacher but fight false doctrine because if we fa- believe false doctrine we'll go all the way to hell and that's not none of us want to go there we need to fight false teaching okay now we are fighters we are fighters why do we fight we are fighters you know our the, the when that is why we need to move out of our comfort zone and go to places out where the sinners are that's why you must join your care cell outreach for missions uh, leave your comfort zone go out where the sinners are because they are in danger they are have a, they are going to eternal destiny without jesus they are going towards eternal hell so take a leave you're working in dell take leave so that you will spend some time to save people who are going to hell nehemiah took a long leave to get involved in god's work we must go out where the sinners are and share the gospel now i don't the story of arthur dodd a british soldier a prisoner of war during world war 2 in auschwitz germany a jewish girl was stripped to the waist and whipped by adolf hitler's officials arthur dodd and other prisoners of war tried to get between the now bleeding girl and these officials who are whipping her and they pulled out a rifle and said if you try to pre- prevent this prevent us from doing this to this girl we will blow your heads off and author dodd said we were spectators in hell that's the name of a book about him we were spectators in hell we couldn't do anything but when people are running towards hell into a christless eternity now we must do something about it we must l- get up from our comfort zones and go to that person without jesus and share the gospel and i want to continue fourth point and this is in continuation with what i'm already saying mount peace uriah the bible says in second samuel chapter 11 verse 7 when uriah came to him david asked joab how the troops were doing and how the war was going so uriah was fighting the battle the king is calling him he gets leave without asking for leave that's something nice okay he's summoned back and then he starts to share war news to the king okay god has called us to share good news about jesus christ the son of god to the unsaved uriah shared the war news to king david and we need to share good news about jesus to sinners about the son of david jesus and we need to open our mouth and speak out somebody some some people say well i'm a, i'm witnessing for jesus with my life that is enough no that is not enough i remember what 
uh, Pastor Joseph Gordon, missionary Joseph Gordon of the Assemblies of God said in the, one of the mission conferences I was part of when I was a student of Southern Asia Bible College. He said, no mercy is real mercy unless you mention the name of Jesus when you do a mercy deed. No mercy is real mercy unless you mention the name of Jesus when you do a, a kind act, a mercy deed. That stuck onto my brain. And I, I, I've tried my best to share the gospel. And we begin the training right at my home in our family prayer. You know, every, every night when we gather for family prayer, okay, there is Dale and Natasha, Ivan and I. It is mandatory for us to share a testimony. So Natasha will say, I went to school and came back safely, praise God. They would say, there was a surprise waiting for me in school. God in his mercy uh, moved the heart of my teacher and I'm the class monitor. And then Ivan will talk about the, the, the Tamil Nadu Ambur type biryani that she was able to make uh, because the grace of God and the Holy Spirit was upon her. And uh, Duke Gerard, the most boring part guy in that family, will talk about some meeting where he preached and some people came to the altar. But that was... That was testimony time, training time for witnessing. I remember, you know, a time, I remember on September 3rd, three days back, I was in a bus in Chennai. I was sitting next to a, a student and I understood, I, 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 I could gather that he was from the Islamic background. He was busy with a smartphone and I pulled up my smartphone, I opened my ESV Bible app and I opened Psalm 119 and verse 165 which says there is a great peace for the lovers of God's law great peace and I said you you know the world is searching for great peace have you heard of Robin Williams and all that and then I said this book this app if you download and read you'll get the way to great peace under 120 seconds I used Psalm 119 119 to somehow make an attempt to lead that young man towards Jesus. We need to open our mouth and share the gospel. That's the lesson from mouthpiece Uriah. Mouthpiece Uriah. Mannered Uriah. Next. Fifthly, mannered Uriah. The Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 11 verse 8. David said to Uriah, go down to your house and wash your feet. So Uriah left the place. And a gift from the king was sent after him. You know, David tells Uriah, go home. David was trying to cover up something. He slept with Bathsheba. Bathsheba is now pregnant. He's trying to cover up. He says, go home. But Uriah, you know, knows he's not going to go home. But he doesn't say anything. He's quietly going away and sleeping with the servants. He doesn't say... I will not go king. No. Preaching time will come a little later. But now he's quiet. David is a superior. David is asking him to do something he's not going to do. But he's quietly doing, not obeying David, but quietly going away. We are unlike Uriah sometimes. Because we pick the first opportunity to fight. Sometimes we are like Luis Suarez. World Cup 2014. Luis Suarez bit a defender. He's been doing that twice at least. He bit other players. Uh, he has been banned for many games. Still not learning a lesson. He bites. We may not bite. But we throw words that bite people. Mannered Uriah. We need to learn from him. We need to learn from him. Missionary spirited Uriah. 2 Samuel 11, 8b and 11. Uriah went out to the king's house. The present from the king was sent out to him. What is this present? You know, if you study the Greek, the, uh, the Hebrew word, it, we understand it's actually choice portions from the king's food. So the king is actually sending him the king's biryani through courier, through, a, through somebody. Okay? Just like the Domino's pizza guy comes to our house after we call him in, the king is sending him some king's biryani. Hopefully, he will take it and he will go to his house and he will meet with Bathsheba, his beautiful wife, and they will have a meal. They will eat this biryani and eat each other after that. That's David's plan. But you know what Uriah said? How can I be in bed? 
when my brothers are in battle the ark is there my fellow brothers soldiers are there in the battle front how can i be in bed enjoying with my wife when my brothers are doing battle risking their life what is this he's expressing his solidarity i may not be there in the battle front i may not be there but in spirit i can be there by sleeping with the servants you know it is some sort of solidarity and we need to show some sort of solidarity how do we show solidarity now our church has supporting so many missionaries they live far away from hyderabad they are in difficult places we need to pray for them now we are not there literally but we can be with them in spirit by kneeling down and interceding for them you say lord we read in the newspapers that delhi became the second most populous country second most populous city 25 million people in the world after tokyo lord bless that pastor who's toiling for you in delhi supported by our church bless his children help them to study well let that pastor have the fire of god always with them would you pray would you pray would you intercede would you stand in the gap that is showing solidarity and not only solidarity like that But you take up your purse and you give liberally for missions. You give liberally for missions. Jesus, you know, applauded that widow who threw two coins. You know what? The reason is the her purse was empty. You know how Jesus applauds the giving? He checks what we have kept inside and not what we have put inside. That's all. That's when Jesus will applaud you. When what you put inside gets more and more and what you keep for yourself becomes less and less jesus will give standing ovation for your giving that is that is the missionary spirit showing some kind of solidarity eight seventhly the seventh part of his life murdering time uriah second samuel 11 12 says david said to uriah stay here today also tomorrow i will let you go so uriah remained in jerusalem that day and the next you know david stayed back and it was time for kings to go to war he got up in the evening second samuel 11 says in the evening he got up he went to the terrace he watched the bath of the bathing beauty called bathsheba he fell into lust and here uriah he is doing nothing murdering time for 48 hours the bible you know we know the idle mind is the devil's workshop and going by what uriah will do next i will talk about it in just a moment uriah was getting not resting he was rusting that's why people of god we need to fill our days with god honoring activities but you're going to watch movie after movie after movie if you're going to watch serial after serial after serial if you're going to jump from one gossip session to another gossip session to another gossip session that is murder of time eight messed up and muddied uriah second samuel 11 13 the bible says a david's in invitation the rusting uriah ate and drank with him and david made him drunk at your corporate office young lady your boss will flirt with you perhaps will will invite you to get into a locked door situation alone with you you know what would you say what would you say will you compromise because you'll get a promotion or will you kick the promotion and say my promotion doesn't come from east or west or from my boss it comes from above and stay without compromising even if it is your boss who's calling you to sin that's a lesson we learned from uriah uriah compromised david made him drunk you know he beat the bed temptation he didn't go to bed with his wife he beat the biryani temptation he didn't eat the king's biryani but he lost to the bottle temptation you know what is your how is my spiritual life how is your spiritual life is it going three steps forward and four steps backward no we need to keep moving forward we need to keep moving forward not three steps forward and four steps backward we need to be consistent we should not be the dog that returns back to the vomit 
And ninth, metanoia. Metanoia is a Greek word for repentance. Or manfiraye, Hindi word for repentance. Uriah. You see 2 Samuel 11, 13b. The Bible says, Uriah, even after getting drunk, went to sleep on his mat along with his master's servants. He didn't go home. Perhaps the Spirit of God convinced him, convicted him, and, he, and the Spirit of God said, No, okay, you failed, you got drunk, but repent, come back to me. You know, Uriah, you, you know, mend your relationship with Yahweh. Don't end your relationship with Yahweh. It's okay, you've fallen in one sin. What do you do? Repent, kneel down and say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. Let your blood cleanse me from every, un every wickedness. Your, Lord, I want you to wash me. That's what we learn from 1 John chapter 1. And we need to repent. We need to repent. We need to mend our relationship with the Lord. Uriah perhaps did that. But on the other hand, David tried to cover up. And when you try to cover up, sometimes God will try to expose your sin on even on this side of eternity. So first, God gave him the uterus problem. He had a sexual encounter with Bathsheba. She got pregnant, uterus problem to uncover his sin. And then Uriah problem. Uriah, he wanted to send Uriah to sleep with his wife. Uriah is stubborn, he's not going. Uterus problem, Uriah problem. You try to sin, you think you're smart, you cover your sin. God can expose your sin. Even on this side of eternity. But surely on the other side of eternity. But that's why the Bible says in Romans 8.1. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Not once where. Not past tense. Present continuous tense. Every day. That's what Jesus talked about in John 15. Abiding in Christ. Remaining in Christ. No condemnation for those who are in Christ is not once where consistent walk we goofed up come back he'll forgive you don't wallow in the mud like the pig and finally Mataya Uriah 2nd Samuel 11 14 to 17 and 25 the Bible says David wrote a letter to Job and Uriah carried that letter and the letter had plans to kill him Uriah would be placed in a place where the fighting was severe, the soldiers were supposed to go back, and in that time, Uriah would die. David, God gave you a talent, but use that talent for God's glory, not to commit sin. He was a great writer, the writer of the many of the Psalms, but he wrote a letter to cover up his sin. Uriah carried that letter, and he went and died. For a hypocritical king, you know, when the news came, he said, in a battle, you know, people will die. There will be few deaths. A hypocritical king, the King David. But you know what? The challenge from Mata Ruraya is that we must be willing to live and die for the son of David, who is not hypocritical, but holy. He's worth dying. He's worth it. That's why I didn't think twice before throwing up my, my, my corporate job. No, I can, one life. If God has called me for ministry, I will live for him. I will die for him. That's why our brothers and sisters in Iraq and Syria, they were ready to have their heads chopped. That is commitment. And today I'm calling you for a commitment from the life of Uriah. A commitment. You say, it's a come what may commitment. What is this? Even if there is, when the temptations keep coming, I will say, no, come what may. And when I live for Jesus, when I preach Jesus, when the trials come, I was, and when, when, when even if I'm butchered for my faith, even if I'm kicked for my faith, even if my teeth is broken for my faith, even if people tell me not so complimentary things about me because of my faith, I will still remain. I will still remain committed. Come what may commitment. Would you close your eyes? All eyes closed, all heads bowed. How many of you say, I'm ready for that come what may commitment? Can I see your hands? Can you raise your hands? That come what may commitment. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. That come what may commitment. I want you to raise up, get up from your seats. Get up from your seats. You may raise that hand, get up from your seats. I'm ready for that come what may commitment. Come what may kind of commitment for the Lord Jesus, to the Lord Jesus. And I'm ready. I have only one life. It will be soon passed. And I'm going to live my life abiding with Jesus.
And with that come what may commitment. I want Pastor Walter to come and lead us in prayer. And I, I want you to just keep praying and say, Lord, I want to come to that come what may kind of commitment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We call to be soldiers. Just lift your hands and say, God, you can count on me. I have made up my mind to love you, to serve you. Not back up, not go back, not to retreat. Jesus, today, Lord, we thank you for the word that has come. Uriah took orders from his master, his king. Even though the king was deceitful, Lord, we take our orders from the master, Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us. God, I pray for every believer here today. You've called us for a very firm commitment, Lord. Very firm commitment, oh God. Lord, Uriah, Lord, was able to withstand the temptation to go to his house, withstand going after food, but he fell for the drink. God, help us to have a firm commitment, not to fall, but to stand up for you, God. To have a made-up mind, come what may, to be like a soldier, that would fight for the country. You would have us as a soldier of the cross. Bless Dr. Duke. Bless his family. We pray for the rest of the service with the communion. I pray that you minister in a special way. In Jesus' name.